Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this updated video. I hope that you have been enjoying your Saturday and so we will be taking a look at the latest across the Caribbean and surrounding areas coupled with what is forecast for that area flow pressure to form in the Caribbean. Now there is a little bit of a change going on with the models as expected. Uh, we, As I always say, we have to keep watching what is going to be the trend because now we're seeing some changes. For example, the Euro model suggested a very interesting scenario and and potentially a strong tropical storm or even a hurricane in the Caribbean. So we're going to be taking a look at that as well in this video. Let's get straight to it. So as of right now, though, we're seeing that things are pretty messy across our eastern islands and even down to northern South America and across Central America, where there's a lot of activity developing this afternoon. Some areas are experiencing some pretty heavy downpours and even some thunderstorms, or it may just be overcast for your area as the evening goes on. But for areas such as us, uh, spots in Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, sections of the Grenadines, and even for Grenada, there has been some rainfall activity even for sections of Trinidad and Tobago as well. Going up to the Leeward Islands, not as much activity, similar story for the Virgin Islands. There is a bit of rainfall activity across some spots in Puerto Rico, similar story as we head toward Hispaniola, and uh, there is even some thunderstorm activity across some areas as well. Let's head further west here. So going to Jamaica, there hasn't been much activity in terms of rainfall or even those thunderstorms for most of us, but some areas have experienced such activity. Similar story for Cuba, much not happening for the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, and even toward the Cayman Islands. But over in Central America, a lot of shower activity across some areas, not for everywhere, but some areas areas are experiencing those thunderstorms and even some heavy downpours at times all the way from Mexico through to Panama and uh, even for some of the offshore islands as well. So if you're being affected by the heavy rainfall, remember that periods of a lot of heavy rain can trigger flooding. So please do not take any unnecessary risks should you encounter any floodwaters. Then for the ABC Islands for Aruba, uh, there has been some shower activity across some areas. Much not happening for Curacao and Bonaire though. So that's what's going on right now across the region. And as we head through the coming week, we're likely to see that area flow pressure form with all that increase in moisture expected. Right in here, it is likely that we'll see that air flow pressure form. But what happens with it? Will it develop? Where will it go? Let's go ahead and take a look at what models are expecting. And we're going to be kickstarting things with the euro. So here we have it. These green colors, they represent the precipitation rate. So when we see a lot more of those green shades and even those yellows and oranges within the midst that is indicating all of that rainfall activity. And those squiggly lines you're seeing, those black squiggly lines are called isobars, which join areas of equal pressure. Now, in terms of an airflow pressure developing potentially into a tropical cyclone, we want to look for those being closed in a circular manner. And the more compact they are, that is indicating strengthening. So let's go. There is the time up there. As we head into the new week, there we see all that increase in moisture expected along the Gulf Coast states for Texas, Louisiana, moving toward the east for parts of southern Mississippi, Alabama, and even into Florida, likely to bring some well-needed showers and even for the northern Bahamas as well. But then we see that area try to get itself together. Uh, we'll see what becomes of that, and that is associated with the front. Take a look at what's happening down in the Caribbean. We see some of that moisture associated with all that increase in rainfall across the Caribbean making its way up to the northeast and then that aerial flow pressure forming in the South Caribbean. However, it is not materializing quickly and take a look at this. As the front continues to make its way out, that low pressure area will no longer be under the influence of it and Euro is showing that we will see some intensification going on and we see how compact those isobars are, suggesting a hurricane based on the pressure that we are seeing there. Eventually, there's that next front, so it would be making its way up toward the northwest. However, with that front, uh, there is going to be an increase in unfavorable conditions. This is what the wind shear map is showing when we see a lot more of those shades of oranges and reds. That is indicating stronger wind shear. That is what usually helps to uh, result in weakening and eventual dissipation of these systems. So in such a scenario, that would be the fate of the hurricane here that Euro is expecting. But now let's go ahead and move on to the GFS. 
So GFS is also expecting that increase in moisture and all that rainfall activity across the Gulf Coast states. We'll talk more about that in a sec, but there we go in the Caribbean with that aerial flow pressure forming and getting itself together, making its way up toward the northeast as that front continues to make its way out. So GFS has been pretty consistent about the northeast for a track expected off the system, but there can be changes. Those changes are slowly being shown as we saw even with Euro. Let's head on with the icon model now as we head to the end of the 12z run this goes out to sunday well saturday evening the 18th of november there we can see what seems to be a tropical storm making its way up to the northeast there's that front so it would be moving up to the northeast under the influence of the front and that is where the icon run stops for that so that airflow pressure could be very close to jamaica and eventually the bulk of the activity could make its way over into hispaniola so areas from jamaica even still going up to the bahamas turks and caicos islands and toward hispaniola should definitely be keeping watch that remains even though the future of the system is on uncertain but we're seeing at least the northeast we're track with all that increased moisture expected in the caribbean so regardless of having a defined tropical cyclone or not there could still be all of that activity moving through and in the case of a lot of heavy rainfall we know what that does flooded mudslides they happen so uh, those areas should be keeping watch and then finally we're taking a look at the canadian run let's see what it has to show here we are as we're going to be heading into the new week and uh, we're seeing all that activity across again the Gulf Coast states the models have been very persistent about that and that is pretty likely but then as we take a look in the Caribbean we're not seeing anything to define however there is that area flow pressure forming and take a look at this so uh, the Canadian model is not expecting that that area will be influenced much by that front as it continues to make its way out toward the east but usually after a front passes there's an area of high pressure now winds within a high pressure system rotate clockwise so in this direction here that is how they rotate and they also help to steer these systems these tropical cyclones that try to develop and as a result if this does not get influenced by that front that area of high pressure would allow for a westward track which means that the system could make its way into central america regardless of that rainfall increase is anticipated over in portions of the western caribbean as we head through next week especially going to the latter part of the week so we'll definitely have to be keeping our eyes out for the system but as of the latest NHC update, we're seeing that there is that 30% chance of formation. So it's been at 30% for around a day now. And that low pressure area has not yet formed. That is expected as we head toward maybe the middle part of the coming week. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, there are a lot of possibilities on the table in regards to the track and potential intensity of the system. And really nothing is solid right now. There could still be development and there could very well not be any tropical cyclone developed. So we'll really just have to wait and see but once the conditions are favorable once we have that airflow pressure forming and it is over water then yes we could definitely see a tropical cyclone become of it now let's head on to what the euro model has to show this goes out to tuesday night of the coming week so between now and then uh, there could be a lot of heavy rainfall across sections of the gulf coast states especially for the coast of texas and even louisiana other areas as i mentioned earlier mississippi alabama going to florida could experience quite a bit of rainfall activity as well this would be very beneficial as it relates to alleviating the drought conditions that some areas have been experiencing but on the downside it does help to induce those adverse effects which include flooding so please stay safe and that is pretty much what i wanted to share with you in this update so i hope you found it to be quite informative i know it has been quite a mouthful especially with these model changes here and the fact that we're not seeing a very solid consistency with the overall potential potential outcome of that area flow pressure so as i said we'll have to keep watching it so i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll respond to you when i can and remember to always be with the wise